so in this video we will see about uh, resolution and composition of forces okay resolution and composition of forces okay so understanding the concept of resolution and composition of forces is very very important so to solve the problems so let us discuss first about uh, the resolution of forces resolution of forces okay resolution of forces means splitting up of a force into two rectangular component is called as resolution of a force splitting up of a force into two rectangular component that is one horizontal component and one vertical component is called as resolution of forces or resolution of a force okay so let us see how to do that i'll consider a force of magnitude f which is inclined at an angle is inclined at an angle theta with the x axis okay now i want to resolve this force into one horizontal component and one vertical component okay so means i need the force fx which is horizontal component of force f and i also need force fy fy which is vertical component of force f okay i have to resolve this force into a horizontal component and a vertical component force into two rectangular components fx and fy okay now let us formulate the equation for fx okay before that i will call this uh, rectangle as a b c and d okay so from triangle abc you measure cos theta cos theta is equal to adjacent fx divided by hypotenuse f therefore fx is equal to f cos theta okay this is the formula for horizontal component of force f similarly to formulate the equation for fi what will be the ang angle here here angle will be theta only this angle and this angle both are equal so in triangle from triangle adc adc measure sin theta sin theta is equal to opposite by adjacent fy by f therefore fy is equal to f sin theta so this is the formula for fy so if a force f is inclined at an angle theta its horizontal component fx is equal to f cos theta and f y is equal to f sin theta so the force f is resolved into two rectangular components that is fx and fy fx is equal to f cos theta and fy is equal to f sin theta so this is resolution of forces now the second one is composition of forces second one composition of forces composition of forces okay composition of forces composition of forces is reverse of uh, resolution of a force means here we will be combining two or more forces to get a single resultant force we will be combining two or more forces to get a single resultant force okay let me take an example I'll consider a rigid body. I'll consider a rigid body. Okay. 
okay for this rigid body i will apply a few forces i will apply a force f one which is purely horizontal means which is acting along y uh, x axis i will consider one more force f2 f2 which is acting at an angle theta 2 with the x axis okay i will consider a force f3 which is acting at an angle theta 3 with the vertical and I will consider a force F4 which is inclined at an angle theta 4 with the x axis. I will consider one vertical force here that is F5 okay, which is acting at 90 degree with the x axis. Okay. Now we want to combine all the forces to get a resultant force. Okay, that is what are the composition of forces. Okay, so while doing composition of forces, the first and foremost thing is to write uh, components of all the forces along x and y direction. That is what the first step. Okay, now for all these forces, we will write the components. We will write the components. Okay, so we know the formula for components fx is equal to f cos theta f i is equal to f sin theta ok therefore for all the inclined forces we have to write the components ok uh, if the force is purely horizontal and if the force is purely vertical no need to write the components only for inclined forces you need to write the components ok so even if you write the components for uh, purely horizontal or purely vertical forces you won't get any components okay uh, that is why no need to write the components for uh, any uh, if the force is purely horizontal or if the force is purely vertical for example for f1 and f5 here in this case we need not to write the components only for inclined forces we need to write the components okay now for f2 we will write the components horizontal component will be see if you resolve this force horizontally okay if we resolve this force horizontally like this horizontally so it will act in right direction like this direction is very important so formula for horizontal component is f cos theta therefore here f2 cos theta 2 and if you resolve this force vertically vertically the force will act in downward direction like this f2 sin theta okay sin theta 2 then for force f3 to write the components we need angle with respect to x axis okay so here uh, for f3 the whatever the angle theta 3 it is given with respect to the y axis okay but uh, to write the components we need angle with respect to x axis because whatever the equations we have derived for fx and fy those equations are derived by considering the angle theta with the x axis with the x axis therefore to write the components we should know inclination of the inclined force with respect to x axis only okay don't take angle with respect to y axis it becomes wrong okay so let me write one dotted line here one horizontal dotted line so we need the angle with respect to x axis no so angle with respect to y axis is theta 3 overall angle is 90 so angle with respect to x axis will be 90 minus theta 3 90 minus theta 3 now you can write the components so horizontal component f3 cos 90 minus theta 3 vertical component f3 sin 90 minus 
theta 3 f3 sin 90 minus theta 3 now for f4 inclination with respect to x axis is directly known what what is its vertical component and horizontal component so horizontal component will be f4 cos theta 4 vertical component will be f4 sin theta 4 okay so this is the first step in combining the two or more forces so you need to you need to write the component then only you will be able to combine the forces so next step is next step is to find sum of forces in x direction okay I want sum of forces in x direction, x direction sigma fx means you need to add all the forces which are acting in x direction okay you need to add all the forces which are acting in x direction before that let me tell you uh, the sign convention sign convention see if the force acts in right direction sign is plus if the force acts in left direction sign is minus if the force acts in upward direction sign is plus if the force acts in downward direction sign is minus so you need to remember this sign convention this is very very important okay if the force in if the force acts in right direction sign is plus upward direction sign is plus left direction sign is minus downward direction is minus okay now we want sum of forces in x direction okay you need to add all the forces which are acting in x direction so here we have force f1 acting in right direction so sign is plus plus f1 and we have one more force here f2 cos theta 2 acting in right direction so plus f2 cos theta 2 and there is a force of f3 cos 90 minus theta 3 which is acting in left direction sign is minus f3 cos 90 minus theta 3 and a force of f4 cos theta 4 acting in left direction again minus f4 cos theta 4 now we have added all the forces which are acting in x direction okay so i'll simplify this sigma fx is equal to f1 plus f2 cos theta 2 minus what is cos 90 minus theta cos 90 minus theta is equal to sin theta correct cos 90 minus theta is equal to sin theta therefore f3 cos 90 minus theta 3 is f3 sin theta 3 minus f4 cos theta 4 now we got sigma fx sum of forces in x direction similarly we will find sigma fy sum of forces sum of forces in y direction okay so you you need to add all the forces which are acting in y direction okay so i will come from the force f2 so there is f2 sin theta 2 acting in downward direction downward direction means sin is minus therefore minus f2 sin theta 2 minus f2 sin theta 2 then one more downward force f3 sin 90 minus 3 theta 3 so minus sin minus f3 sin minus f3 sin 90 minus theta 3 then f4 sin theta 4 which is acting in upward direction sin is plus plus f4 sin theta 4 and force fy which is acting purely in upward direction plus fy plus fy okay therefore sigma fy is equal to minus f2 sin theta 2 minus what is sin 90 minus theta sin 90 minus theta is cos theta correct sin 90 minus theta is cos theta therefore minus f3 cos theta 3 plus f4 sin theta 4 plus f5 
okay now we got sum of forces in x direction you also got sum of forces in y direction knowing sigma fx and sigma fi you can find the magnitude of the resultant force correct you can find magnitude and direction of the resultant force okay let me take theta as inclination of the resultant force with respect to the x axis now for this uh, triangle abc apply pythagoras theorem so what will be the magnitude on this side so here it is sigma fx magnitude so here vertical side we have sigma fi here you will have the same magnitude sigma fi so considering the triangle abc okay <coughs> applying the pythagoras theorem r square is equal to sigma fx square plus sigma fy square therefore r is equal to root of sigma fx square plus sigma fy square so this is the equation for magnitude of the resultant force coming to the direction of the resultant force means angle theta with the sigma fx so you measure tan theta in the same triangle it will be sigma fy by sigma fx therefore theta is equal to tan inverse of sigma fy by sigma fx this is the magnitude of the resultant force formula for magnitude of the resultant force okay so in the numerical problems so instead of giving these notations f1 f2 f3 and f5 they will give some values even they will give values of these angles also we have to follow the same procedure to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force okay so this completes uh, the discussion on uh, resolution and composition of forces thank you